battle Anderson, Gill, Hamilton, and Bardo for Illinois. And it is Garrett, Hillman, Jones, Edwards, and Arnold for Indiana. There's been one three-pointer, that by the hot freshman Jay Edwards. Here comes Illinois, they're down by two. We have 16.50 to go here at Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. And from the side, that's Anderson. No good. Garrett, the player of the week last week. He's done an outstanding job in the middle for Indiana with the rebound. Five seconds on the shot clock. Hillman has been hitting and does. That's a two-pointer. Nine to five. Clark Kellogg, this is quite a way for you to make your Big Ten debut. <laughs> Certainly is, but that's the wonderful world of television for you, Jim. This is Bardo starting because Blackwell has not been scoring for the Illini. And Hillman makes the interception. And now Battle makes the interception. Battle goes up. Four points to the Nine seven Indiana. Indiana's won its last three in a row. Illinois lost three all on the road to Michigan. Arizona. Got by Ohio no good. And lastly to Ohio State. Hamilton looking to tie the game. That's now. Then that's a ball to open and picked up by Battle. Gill takes the shot. And guys have really made a difference in this lineup for IU. Played together three state championships in Marion, Indiana. Can't underestimate the fact that those two guys have worked well together. Bobby Knight up on his feet. Time has been called. 14.44 to go in the first half. 11-9, Indiana, led by the four points of Jones and three veterans, both freshmen. The Hoosiers by two. <laughs> Illinois' ball in. Bardo will toss it in. I have a word for you local stations on our Big Ten Network in a moment. Because there were technical difficulties, we'll have to advise you over the air what's going on. Take the battle, who stuffs it. Then now has six points at the tie game. Well, it looked like IU was in a man-to-man -man on that out-of-bounds play under the basket. That allowed Battle to get loose with a good screen, and he knows what to do with it when he gets it inside that close. Jones with four points, also leads everybody in rebounds with three. Here's Hillman. Edwards. Io can't get loose underneath. There's Io now, but still must feed the ball out. He is a defensive specialist. There's Hillman. And Joe now has four points. Break number four will be our next commercial break. At local stations, that will be a local break for you. Message done. Back to the ball game. The Hoosiers leading by two, 13-11. It really started out hot, Jim. They've made six of their first seven shots from the floor. In this three-game winning streak, they've shot 53% in all three of their recent games. Until they upset Ohio State. Bardo has it blocked by Edwards, and Edwards draws the foul. And for Jay, that will be his second. He is not fouled out yet. Garrett is fouled out twice. Very few Indiana men foul out, and yet from the free throw line, Indiana leads the Big Ten. So when you talk about fouls, the balance is clearly in the favor. The 88% over their last four games from the free throw line, Indiana has shot. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. 
one, but Dell hasn't scored yet. Knocked away goaltending on Hamilton. And give the basket to Dean Garrett. And check that. That's his second basket. And he has 15. 15 12. Garrett's averaged 24 points and 10 rebounds over the last three ball games for the Hoosiers. That time got it down in low and got, up, got the hoop up and down. Garrett, much taller than Hamilton, who's taking the shot there. But that's why Hamilton is in the ball game for offense. Certainly, he's got a nice jump shot, Jim. He can shoot it from 15 to 17 feet very well. That time he took Garrett away from the basket, got the open 17-footer to go down for him. Hoosiers by one. Indiana facing an Illinois team that's lost their last three on the road. And are they glad to be back in Champaign? Went to everybody, and Garrett comes up with it and puts it in. Six points for Dean Garrett. Boy, a tough break that time for the Illini. They got their hands on the basketball, couldn't come up with it. Garrett got the loose ball and finished things off with a little four-foot jump shot. Nick Anderson, yes, his first point. by one. Belkowski has been starting for Indiana. There's a three-point try by Edwards, no good. Garrett comes up with it, and a foul is called. But he was hit in the nose. That did not play the Minnesota game. Gill draws the foul. Well, they started Steve Iowa in Belkowski's place, Belkowski's place, and he gives them a rugged rebounder up front. Maybe the best athlete on the team. That's what they say. Edwards. Boy, that wasn't even close, was it? <laughs> Tough shot by the young freshman. A little pushing underneath. And a baby against Steve Isle called by Ted Valentine. That's on Jay Edwards, and that's number three. He's going to have to sit down. Keith Smart's going to enter the lineup. 17-16 the score, 12.04 to go, first half. Smart scored 15 points in the game against Minnesota in Bloomington on Gill. Thursday night. Good position there, and battles over the top. Mike Stock makes the call, and it's a good call. This might work for you. Battle out of position. That time, Lyndon Jones just got inside rebounding position. Battle forced to go over his back, picked up the personal foul. Lyndon Jones and Gill is on him. One point ball game, Hoosiers lead. There's Spark handling the ball for the first time. On the Pan Am team, the winning shot against the Syracuse in the finals. And yet he's not played much until the Minnesota game. Lately, Isle had a shot, tried to take the ball to the basket. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Well, excellent defensive pressure that time by the line now. Forced the turnover. Time. They got four second shot attempts. The end result is Nick Anderson goes to the free throw line, but Indiana's certainly going to have a problem with IU with, with the Illini on the offensive board. Remember, Minnesota, despite the fact they lost big, out-rebounded Indiana. That's been one of their problems, Jim. They've not been a strong rebounding team all season long, in particular in the Big Ten play. Anderson, I said Hamilton. Anderson goes to the line. Kuyaba is in and Hamilton is out, giving him the bigger man. Anderson comes into this game 10th in the league in rebounding, averaging six a game. He's only about 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. A quick jumper, though, very physical player in the paint. Illinois absolutely last of the Big Ten in free throw shooting. They are now four for six. 
18-17 to score. Illinois leads for the first time. Indiana with the ball. Down by one. Remember, Jay Edwards is on the bench with three personal fouls. He's been the hot freshman. And Keith Smart, a savvy senior, has replaced him. But since Edwards has taken the seat, that's a bad pass there by Jones. No doubt about that, Jim. He threw it right in the... He tried to cram that ball in between two defenders. The Illini with those quick athletes out front can get their hands on a lot of passes. That time, Lyndon Jones just telegraphed the pass, and they come up with the turnover. And Keith Smart draws the foul. I'll give you the same line that I've used every time we have done an Illinois game. Coach Lou Henson says, quickest team he's had, but they can't shoot. Well, they've really struggled from the field in their shooting percentage. Coming into the game, only 46% as a team. Certainly, that's got to be a concern. There's battle. No! And here comes Smart, and Callaway is back in. Here is Hillman, and Hillman goes all the way to the basket, and he has six points. He had a career-high 17-13 in the first half against Minnesota, but now Callaway has joined Smart and Garrett and Hillman and Isle, a veteran team. Chopped from the side of that's Anderson. Well, that's one guy that hasn't had a problem shooting the ball for the Illini. Anderson comes in shooting better than 57% from the floor in Big Ten play, which is fifth best in the conference. Illinois by one, 20 to 19, midway through the first half. And Callaway is taking that extra step the first time he's handled the ball. Well, coming into today's game, certainly I felt IU was going to have to execute their offense well, Indiana I'm speaking of, and limit the number of turnovers. So far, the Illini has forced a few turnovers here in the first half of this first half. Illinois is not, oh, they're smart, almost stole the ball away from Gill and almost fouled again. Smart is reaching in from behind, and he's sure to draw another foul if he keeps this up. But he hasn't played there. He reaches in from behind and knocks the ball away. Anderson. Yes. And that's six points for Nick Anderson, the sophomore out of Chicago. Biggest lead now for Illinois by three. 22-19. Anderson's really a nice-looking young player. He's got a nice, soft touch from the perimeter and inside. Galloway doesn't take the shot. There's Garrett, and that's Cuyaba pushing off on Garrett. That's just a third team foul. No basket. Smart is called back by Bobby Knight for a brief talk. Well, I tell you what, Jim, I don't like to officiate from here, but I didn't see that foul by Cuyaba. Casper must have committed that one because um, maybe he got some body contact while Garrett was cutting to the basketball. Well, neither did 6,000 Illinois fans. <laughs> Hillman. Oh, all over top of Miss Bardo. We didn't have any problem seeing that one, did we? No. That's the thing that Hillman says. He has been coached lately, and he, remember, he averaged 41 points as a high school senior. Take the shot as soon as you get the ball, because that will set up your step around a man should he commit. No question about ball. it. He executed it perfectly that time. He's shooting 62% from the floor in Big Ten play. Just hasn't shot the ball that much. Here's Smart. Ball back away by Gill. Fine defensive play. Two on two. Bardo Gill. He misses the slam dunk. Kuyama follows with a whistle of blown. <laughs> I tell you what, great defensive play at one end. Then excellent execution of the two-man fast break between Gill and Bardo. Gill got it back and tried to jam, and he took off from about six feet away from the hoop. Didn't get the ball to go down. But he nonetheless, and he earns a trip to the free throw line. Now in the foul by Rick Kendall Gill is it was better than 70% for Illinois. He has two points. In their three-game losing streak, Blackwell, who normally starts in backcourt with Gill, they were shooting 22 floor. Well, certainly, that's part of the reason Lou Henson decided to shake things up a little bit in the backcourt, and so far it's worked out pretty well. Five-point lead, that by far is the biggest lead for Illinois. Galloway had a little tough time getting the ball up court. They're going to move the ball up court. They get called here. Going across the 10 seconds. Go, Rick! Go, Rick! 
Uh, you've really got to be patient and execute their half-court offense and get good shots. Otherwise, they give the Illini a chance to execute in the open floor. Shot of the Gillis passes him with all kinds of problems. Mark Mark Anderson. That's exactly what the Illini wants to do, Jim. They want to create turnovers and get fast break opportunities and get this crowd into the game. And that's what's happening so far. Jones is getting ready to come in as the whistle blows. On the foul, and it'll be against Indiana's Joe Hillman. Check that. It's going to be a foul and set against Kuyaba. That's going to be number two. Here comes Lyndon Jones, and Hillman will go out. Well, Coach Knight really just trying to find some backcourt combination to settle his club down and allow them to get shot opportunities. The last two or three times down the floor, they've not been able to get a shot up. They've turned the basketball over. Isn't it something that they take out the two freshmen and fall behind by five points? <laughs> I tell you what, those two freshmen have really played well, Jim, and the fact that they've won three state champ they won three state championships together certainly prepares them a little bit more for this type of basketball in front of 16, 17,000 people. Illinois by seven, Indiana with the ball. Whoever loses today will have five losses in the Big Ten, and that'll be tough. There's Garrett over Kuyama, no good, followed by Smart. And the basket is good. Jim, I think they called the foul on Keith Smart. I think they did also. But, but nonetheless, the they allowed the basket. I really don't understand how that can be. He went up over the back, tip slammed the basketball back in, was called for the foul, but the basket counts. That's beyond me. And battle will go to the line. And if you're looking for replay, because of our technical difficulties that we've been explaining to you and why we got on the air late in this game, we can't replay it for you. So you saw it, we saw it, and that's it. Battle makes the front end. Battle now with seven points. Here comes Phil Coons in. Kuyaba goes out. Coons, big, strong, 6'9", 229. Not as big as Kuyaba at 17. But a very strong player. Eight points for Battle. Seven-point lead for Illinois. Callaway bringing the ball up court, back in the game, along with Jones. And there's Isle, Garrett and Smart are the other men. Isle won't shoot from there. They lay off him. Break number six to our station, since we're doing it this way. Attention local states. I love this. Break number six will be a local break. And Garrett says that's my seventh and eight points. It's 28-23. He's really tough if he gets it down that close to the basket. He shoots that little turnaround jumper rather well. That's Bardo. He's about the only outside shooter that's hitting lately. Gill. Oh, that's a bad shot there right off the backboard. And it looks like a foul there. Ball brought away by Smart. And on him is Anderson. Here comes Indiana down by five. Gill lost control of that ball going up. May have gotten bumped, as you said, Jim, but no call. That's the Big Ten for you. Smart trying to get something set up here. Feed to Garrett. That's usually two points. It's not two points, but there's a foul call. Called by Ted Valentine. And they'll say that it is on number 44, and that is Phil Coons, who last time out played but nine minutes before he fouled out. Well, certainly that's a... Um Big time foul to minutes played ratio. Todd Jadlow will get his first look at the Illinois team here in Champaign. Callaway has gone to the bench. Jadlow usually comes in for Pelkowski, who did not start today because of the injured nose. Garrett's really been the key player for IU in this three-game winning streak. He's averaged 24 points, 10 rebounds. He shot the ball very well from the free throw line as he misses the first one. 73% free throw shooter, and he had that amazing streak in the game against Ohio State. Never missed one. <laughs> 10 for 10. In Big Ten plays, fifth in the conference, shooting 84% from the line. 
Now Glenn Blackwell, the only senior among the first 9, 10, 11, the only senior on the club for Illinois comes in, and Anderson goes out. As Garrett misses two. How undine like Garrett. 28-23, 6.20 to go. Illinois leads right off the hands of Hamilton into the hands of Isle. Two on one. Hey, look at Isle. He took it all the way in. Boy, that's a great move to go coast to coast like that. Isle showing you his athletic ability that time as he went up amongst a couple of good, good leaping Illini players and got that one to go down for him. Was well, a seven-point ball game. Now it's a three-point ball game. Hamilton is going to be short right to the hands of Lyle, and he misses the ball. A dive. They get the ball off the hands of Garrett. He picks it up. Back to Jones. Boy, what a wild exchange that was. <laughs> Nobody could find the handle. Now to Garrett, and he's quickly double teamed, but he's going to take the shot anyway. No good. Fardo with the rebound. Gill underneath his Coons, and he's fouled as he goes underneath. The faster pace the game is, the better it is for the Illini. That time they get a defensive board, get it out quickly. Gill makes an excellent pass to Coons who finishes it off and has an opportunity for a three-point play. Garrett draws the foul. Boone's a 60% free throw shooter. We'll get one shot, of course. Right to aisle. Well, he shot that one like a 60% shooter. Like Short. a 40% free throw shooter. <laughs> Wasn't too good. And Garrett, on the other hand, pretty good free throw shooter, and he didn't come close with either one of his. That's smart. He hasn't taken the shot yet. Gadlow to Garrett. He's under the basket. Puts it up again short. Look at this. Up and missing the shot is Gadlow, and Bardo comes down with it. Boy, Gadlow just rushed that shot. He was anticipating it maybe being blocked. Shot it over the basket. From the side, Blackwell. I tell you what, the backcourt for the Illini has really struggled with their shooting from the floor in past games, but that's not been the case in this first half today. And once you get confidence. No question about it. That's the key, Jim. Yeah, the quick hands of Kendall Gill knocking the ball away from Jones. Joe Hillman coming back in. Smart will go out. Let's recheck that IU lineup again. It'll be Hillman, Smart, Gadlow, Garrett, and Jones. Illinois, Gill, Battle, Blackwell, Bardo, and Kuhn. So Lou Henson is doing a lot of shifting around also. Thirty-two twenty-five. Smart's going to take the shot. Nope. And there's Blackwell with the rebound. Gill. Underneath, but knocked out of bounds by Indiana. 4-16 left in the first half. Indiana seemed to go out of sync when Jay Edwards went to the bench with three personal fouls. They certainly did. They had a problem getting any shooting opportunities. Illinois was able to force some turnovers and convert. That's why they've been able to maintain a five to seven point lead. Bardo underneath Battle. Great oh. feed by Bardo. Ten points for Battle. Boy, excellent pass. And when Battle gets it down in that paint, he's throwing it down with authority every time. Illinois fans thought that Smart dragged that back foot. Garrett's going to take the shot. And that is ten points for Garrett. 0 for 2 from the line to five field goals. He's their, bread, he's their bread and butter guy, Jim, excuse me. He's the guy that really makes this team go because he can get it done inside. Gill from outside. A two-pointer. Six points for Kendall Gill. And a nine-point lead for Illinois. Ball is knocked out of the hands of Smart by Gill. Gill is a very quick Blackwell. Oh, what a great move that was by Blackwell. Again, no Jim. Turnovers. That allows Illinois to get out in the break, to get out in two-on-ones, three-on-twos, and get those easy baskets. That elevates their confidence, and it gets these towel-waving fans back into the action. Roman made a bad throw there, but the ball went off the hands of Blackwell. 11-point lead for Illinois. 
50 to go. 21 seconds on the shot clock. Our fans are waving their Illinois marble hankers. There they are. Five blocked by Coons. Here's Gill. Foul call. Very much he makes the foul call. I think that one's going to go against battle. Player control. That's what it is. And they're in the one-on-one -on -one situation. They had it all going their way. Oh boy, they <laughs> did they ever. Battle can really elevate himself. That time he went way up beyond the basket to pull down that partially blocked shot and start to break. Illinois unable to convert and Battle picked up the charging foul and it looks like Hillman is going to go to the free throw line. And Brian Sloan, his father Jerry of NBA fame, is coming to the ball game. Number 45. He has actually started three games this year. Hillman, as you said, is at the line. And he is an 89% free throw shooter. Well, we probably should be counting these two up then, huh, Jim? Should. There's the first. And that's seven points for Joe Hillman. Coach Knight really just trying to find the lineup that can get themselves going get themselves back into some kind of offensive rhythm because they've not had it. Look at that rebound there and lost the ball away. Sloan had the ball and lost it back to the Illini and a lot of that's due to the quick hands of Illinois. Good point. Hamilton has the ball knocked away by Hillman but Barrow picks it up for Illinois. Here's Gill. He has been something today and Garrett with an important rebound for the Hoosiers. Jones. Whoops, almost threw the ball by Smart. Ten-point lead, Illinois. Just about two minutes left of the first half and 28 seconds left on the shot clock. Jones to Garrett. Bing. Oh, boy, that's what you like to see your point guard do. Penetrate with the idea of making the pass once he breaks down that defense. Jones did it perfectly there. Garrett finished it off with the two-hand slam. Garrett is hot again. 12 points despite going over two from the line. Eight-point lead, Illinois. Boy, Hamilton had excellent position on Garrett that time. They didn't get him the basketball. Hamilton's going to take a shot anyway. No good. And there's Smart. The ball's knocked away. And there's Bardo. Boy, Great individual play by Bardo. Oh, that's, that's excellent work on the offensive glass. Good quick hands. Nice strong move to finish the play. But, Jim, again, second shot opportunity for Illinois. We've seen it happen maybe four or five times in this first half. Here's Jones taking the shot. Nobody's fouled by Kendall Gill. Local stations were waiting for the next break in the action to give you that local break that we owe you, but none has been forthcoming. Smart goes out. Isle comes back in. And again, for those of you just joining us, we're advising our stations along the Big Ten Network of what to do because we've had severe technical problems, and we're just glad to be on the air and talking <laughs> to you and showing you what's going on, believe me. That's right. We're just glad to be here, huh, Jim? That's right. Here's Lyndon Jones. Remember, Indiana leads the Big Ten in free throw shooting. Although today, thus far, they are two for five. That's Much an interesting story in itself, the fact that Illinois coming in the worst free throw shooting team in the league, shooting pretty well in the early going. They certainly are. Two, four, six, eight, four, eleven. And IU now two of six as Jones missed that second one. Oh, Hamilton steps right by Garrett, but misses. Bardo follows. He's been hot. Another second shot opportunity again, Jim. That's the one area that I thought was going to be a key for IU to keep Illinois off their offensive board. So far, IU has not done a good job of that. They'll probably take about five teams, the estimate is, out of the Big Ten in the NCAA tournament. But the sixth team is going to have some trouble. There's Jones, and he's got it. And so you're battling for a position not only within the Big Ten, but in the eyes of the NCAA. No question. That big tournament bid is what you want to hope to get at the end of the season. And like you say, the first five teams probably assured of getting there. That sixth team flirting with um, danger. <laughs> Ten seconds to go. Shot clocked off. They'll play for the last. They're up by nine points, looking to go up by 11 or perhaps 12 by game's end. No shot for Blackwell. It is a local break coming up here at the end of the half, which Illinois 
behind most of the time, has come back to take the lead, 42-33. Illinois by seven, 17 13 to go. Kuyaba's gonna battle Dean Garrett in the low post, try not to let him get it in the position he wants it. Make him work, make him maybe shoot the little 10 or 12 foot turnaround instead of the six or eight foot turnaround shot. Is Kuyaba called for pushing off again? If so, that's his third foul. Well, you got to like the way IU really looks to get the ball to Dean Garrett. They do a nice job of creating passing lanes, and he does a good job of posting up, getting good position. Yeah, you know the line on defense is just all over Indiana, no matter where they are on the court. They've got great team quickness. Thirty seconds on the shot clock. Indiana trying to exhibit the patience it needs. Edwards can hit from there. Looks good, and it's for three pointer. His third, his second in this half, and it is a four point game, 46-42. Boy, you got to marvel at the poise of both he and Lyndon Jones. They really seem to never get flustered. Battle, shooting for Hillman. And a foul called by Gary Muncy against Isle. And for Steve, that will be his third personal foul. Here in Champaign, Illinois, they're concerned about the University of Illinois. They're happy that John Makovic is their new coach. But they're also hopeful that Bonnie Blair from Champaign, Illinois, will win more than one medal and a gold as a speed skater in the Olympic Games. This is her hometown. Battle is at the line with 10 points, and now he's three for three from the line. Five-point game. Nope, and Isle almost fouled by Kuyava, but they said it went off, off Lyle, and so it belongs to Illinois, leading by five, and they get the ball. Boy, that's happened a couple of times on free throws. Illinois has been able to work into inside rebounding position and either force an out-of-bounds possession situation or come up with the rebound themselves. That just shouldn't happen at the free throw line. Lots of contact under that basket. Oh, Anderson. Fiyama battled Edwards with the ball. Knocked back by Lyle to him. Edwards is, nope, steps around, Bardo can't get in the way. 15 and a half minutes left in the game. Look at this, Garrett hits from outside for two, his first points of the second half. Well, he had a tough time getting it in the low post the last two or three possessions, decided to step out to about 12 feet and knock down the jump shot. Well, it was a nine-point game at halftime, but since then, Indiana scored 11 and Illinois has scored five. That is a three-point game with 15.26 to go. Illinois leads, but only by three, 47-40. When here in Champaign, the RCM crew stay at the Chancellor Hotel and Convention Center, the Chancellor, Champaign's Hospitality Center. I got one for you, Clark Kellogg. You know what I found? Sitting in my hotel room today reading a little booklet. Champaign is a derivative from a Latin word that means field or flatness. And of course, when you're in Champaign, it looks very, very flat. It is big sky country. I never knew that, Jim. You learn something all the time, every day, don't you? I'll give you something else as we look at the three-point. Edwards, three for three, <laughs> Illinois over one. And that is that this used to be a swamp, this area. And they got drainage ditches in and made it the fertile farmland it is. How about that? <laughs> Enough of my reading in the hotel room. 47-44, 15-19 to go. Illinois leads and has the ball. Ball interception by Isle went right back to Anderson. He lost it out of bounds. Belongs to Indiana. Boy, you can feel the momentum slowly shifting, Jim. Indiana has come out and gotten back on track. They only trail by three. Illinois, on the other hand, has not gotten real good shot opportunities and turned it over three times in this half. Defense! 
There's Hillman loose. Not going to take the shot. Oh, he well, almost had a what, the, he's he's got to take there. that shot, Jim. Oh, he's all by himself. Look at Isle. He's three for three. Well, I guess not if you knew, if you know you're going to get it to somebody inside. But Hillman had a wide open 15 oh. footer, and that shot's going to be available to all the IU perimeter players because Illinois really packing it in. Suyava so must have watched him, but that does not count. A whistle blows under the basket. Foul is going to be for pushing off. The ball will belong to Illinois as Isle has drawn his fourth foul. So you can imagine that a fellow like Todd Jadlow might be coming in soon. The DeBardo tipped in by Cuyabo. Boy, Illinois needed that hoop. They had gone a little while without a field goal. Excellent tip in by the big fellow, Cuyaba. 49 46, 14 15 to go. Illinois led. It's late in the first half. Jones has seven points all in the first half, has not shot in the second half. Edwards looks for shoots. Oh, look at this. The way he takes it in, and he's fouled on the way by. Boy, He'll coming two shot foul. Sorry, Jim. Coming out of high school, you knew he was a great perimeter shooter, Jay Edwards, I'm speaking of. But he's shown the ability to drive and slash to the basket on occasion. And that's just going to make him a better player and make his team a better team. That time he drove the baseline, created a shot that really wasn't there initially, and drew the foul. Bardo draws his second foul. Edwards will get two shots, and now he has eight points in this half. And 11 of the game, and all of his shots from the floor have been three-pointers, three of them. Well, he comes in shooting better from the three-point arc than he's shooting from the two-point area. It is a one-point game. Remember, there's some things that you're not seeing replays, for example, because of technical problems that we've had all day long. We apologize for that. We'll be back in business Wednesday night. Battle high off the glass with his first basket of this half. He now has 13 points. Boy, Garrett really tried to go after that one and block it, but Battle adjusted it as he shot it and got it way up on the glass and in. Garrett's wide open. The cover up on him, and Bardo with a big rebound. The feed to Anderson. Oh, boy, that's beautiful basketball there, Jim. Excellent rebound by Bardo. Then coast to coast, penetrating and then finding the open Anderson who finishes off the break with the two-hand tomahawk. Back to a five-point lead. Garrett misses badly there and guess who's got the rebound, and there's a foul. Illinois gets the rebound and a foul on Indiana. I tell you what, Steve Bardo's been a big-time player for them. He's been a key in this ball game. He's done it at the offensive end with the rebounding, that time at the defensive end with the board, and he's got this crowd back into it again. And Steve Isle has fouled out with 12.56 to go. Bobby Knight has not yet gone to his bench. Isle is still on the floor. They'll have to wave him off here. Edwards and Hillman are back under their basket, and now Smart is getting up. I think and that's Callaway. And Isle, that is. Jim, if I could correct you. right. And Isle goes to the bench. He is through for the day with 12.56 to go and six points. Callaway with no points. Despite the fact that Rick Callaway has not been playing lately, he still leads the club in scoring. He well, had that much of an impact early on, so he is their top man, and maybe he can help because certainly Indiana's going to need all the help they can get. And they're taking the alley-oop battle steps on the baseline. It belongs to Indiana. Big turnover there because Indiana is again trailing Illinois by five. Yeah, you hate to come down with momentum on your side and not even get an attempt at the basket. The lob just not there. Bardo tried to force it. Edwards. Pressure. Look at this pressure put on by Illinois. Hillman gets it, and there's a foul on the man on the floor for Illinois. 
And that is Bardo, and that will be his third. So both he and Kendall Gill have three. 12.39 left, 53-48, Illinois leads. At Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. On Wednesday night, the Big Ten Network will be in Iowa City as Ohio State comes to town. There you are. Or many of you will see Purdue at Michigan State. Hillman takes it all the way in and is batted back. Picked up by Edwards, who's good from there, and he hits his first two-pointer of the day. 11 points for Edwards. It's a three-point game. It's a 350. Kendall Gill, Jones hooked him as he went by, and Linden draws his first personal foul as Loyal, Lowell Hamilton is coming in, and Battle will get a rest. So they keep Kuyaba in, and Hamilton will replace Battle. Who had 10 points in the first half, only three here in the second. Hamilton only had two in that first half, and Garrett ended up with 12. That's why I think Lou Henson decided to bring Kuyaba into the, into the half as a starter, and he's been out there the whole second half. Hamilton probably going to look to give the line nine some offensive punch in the half court game. Gill, yes. He's only got eight points, but he's played an outstanding game today. He's Kendall really, Gill. Him and Bar Bardo both have really played well. They've done it with good defense, good active hands, and made shots when they've had the opportunity. Garrett way outside. Five-point game, Illinois leads. Edwards, a fall-away jumper for two. I tell you what, you got to like this freshman, Jim. He can shoot it from outside. He can get to the basket. He's got tremendous poise for a freshman. He should be a great player barring any kind of injury. Remember, he did not play much of the first half because of three personal fouls. And now has 13 points in the second half and 16 altogether. Three point drive by Gill, no good. Whistle blows. And again, it is going to be on the Illini. Well, Bardo, from this angle, didn't look like he actually came over the back. It looked like he and an Indiana player were side by side, and in that situation, you should be able to go for the basketball. Nonetheless, an over-the-back foul was called. Bardo, a spark with 10 points, has now picked up his fourth personal foul, his third in his half. 55-52. Back to Assembly Hall, but now we pause for these local messages. I'm Jim Simpson with our guest commentator, Clark Kellogg. Great star from Ohio State of not too long ago. How's that? Make you feel better? Yeah, it makes you feel better, Jim. Appreciate that. 11.20 to go in the game. 55-52. to 52. Illinois leads. They led at the half. 42-33. to 33. And now, Isle is fouled out for Indiana. Bardo has four personal fouls for Illinois. And you can see that Gill and Edwards each have three. And Kuyava has three. Oh, it is Callaway, Hillman, Edwards, Jones, and Garrett for Indiana. Hamilton, Blackwell back in. Anderson, Gill. And Kuyava for Illinois. Three-point range, yes! And that is four for Edwards. He is wrecking the Illinois in the second half with... 16 points in this half. It's a tie game at 55. Well, I guess the young fellow figured he lost some time in that first half because of those fouls, and he's played very well in the second half. Lowell Hamilton answers with a two-pointer, 57-55, and we've got better than a half to go. Illinois in the first half led by as much as 11 points. They wanted a palmed ball there, a carry by Jones, but did not get it from the officials. To Garrett. And they're going to give Garrett a charge because Blackwell was right there. Second foul on Dean Garrett. And now a technical on Bobby Knight. I'll tell you what, that was a tough call against Dean Garrett. I don't know if he actually had time to turn. And Bobby Knight, voicing his displeasure with the call, picks up a technical. This could be a key turning point here as Kendall Gill, the Illini's best free throw shooter will get an opportunity. Mark it down at 57-55 with 10.20 to go. 
Garrett was called with what Knight thought was not a true foul. Bobby Knight voiced his displeasure and has drawn the technical. And let's see where this leads. Well, he got the first one to go down. And they'll also get the basketball. No, hardly got there. <laughs> they never have a chance. It's just like putting in golf. If you don't get it to the cup, doesn't have a chance to go in. Knight is still yelling at Gary Muncy, the official. But I think it was Ted Valentine who made the technical call on him. That's right. I think you're right, Jim. And a technical never will stop Coach Knight from displaying his displeasure. There, the man's hurt. Gill is hurt. Grabbed oh, his in. ankle as he came across the center line. It folded under him. Boy, he's in pain, Jim. Oh, you hate to see this. At any level, you hate to see a guy go down in that type of agonizing pain, especially when it's a knee or an ankle. He was grabbing his right ankle. Ted Valentine, the official on this side, as Gill and Jones were vying against one another, saw exactly what happened and quickly called timeout. young man's in a lot of pain down there no need to speculate but like you say Jim I think it's his right ankle that's what he grabbed first then he waved his left leg in pain in the air and he's being worked on and the question is that ankle still folded under him as he now gets up with help from the team medical person while this happens in our Iowa Michigan game he's going to get up and get off the court Sam Licklider, one of the officials went down with a torn calf muscle. We were told the instantaneous idea was he was through for the season. We now understand from the officials working this game that Sam was told two to six weeks could be out for the season, but might be back, hopefully be back, in two weeks. Let's hope, though. You hate to see anybody get injured, even if it is an official, right, Jim? Those guys That's need right. to work, and they do an outstanding job. Larry Smith replaces Kendall Gill, and the question is, how bad is Kendall Gill? Well, he got up and walked off under his own power. That's usually a pretty good sign. This is Smith, the man who replaced him. 58-55 to Yaba. Well, right away we see that the Illini come up with a five-point, well, three-point play after that technical foul called against Bobby Knight. Knight wants his team to move on offense. Edwards, Hillman from the side, yes. First points in this half for Joe Hillman, nine altogether, 60-57. That's the one thing Coach Knight thinks this unit he has on the floor has done well for him in the three-game winning streak. That's meant penetrate, move the basketball, and move themselves. Hamilton, no. And there's Callaway with the rebound for Indiana. Double teamed, and now Jones will bring the ball up court. Call Callaway holding his right hand. May have hurt it when he fell down at the other end. There is Callaway underneath. The basket counts and he's fouled. His first points of this game. Battle is getting ready to come back for Illinois. Hamilton draws his first personal foul. Well, that and time, sorry Jim, that time Callaway just allowed to get excellent post-up position on the low box. Lowell Hamilton stood right behind him. Tell you what, Bobby Knight is still yelling at Ted Valentine, one of the officials, and Ted put that whistle back in his mouth. Like, I may blow this thing. <laughs> you better watch out. 60 to 59, Illinois leads by one. Here's Smith in for Kendall, who's seated on the bench. Nobody's working on him. I used knock at the door a few times, Jim. They've not been able, they've taken the lead once. Duyaba! So Yabba's hit two big buckets the last time down the floor. A jumper from about 16 feet, and now the, the big sky hook. 8.40 to go. Illinois by three. Indiana working on a three-game winning streak. Illinois trying to end a three-game losing streak. Three-pointer, and that's Edwards again. And that is his fifth three-pointer of the game, and it is a tie game at 62. Well, they've got to get a hand in his face. You've got to make him put it on the floor. He's hit five of those things from behind the arc. You've got to make him put it on the floor, beat you doing something else. The Illini, is not, the Illini have not made the adjustment to his three-point marksmanship. 
Smith lost the ball, and Edwards picks it up. And all the way back quickly on defense. Looks like Kendall Gill is getting ready to come back in for the Illini, and that's good news for Illinois. Uh-oh, he is loose. Look out. Nope, no good there, but Callaway has got it and puts it up and in. For a great offensive rebound by Ricky Callaway. It was 44-33, now it's 64-62. Indiana leads with 7.36 to go. And in the second half, Jay Edwards has, let me count them up, 19 of his 22 points. Boy, that's a big second half in college Ooh. basketball to light it up like that. But you can accumulate a lot of points if you're knocking down those three-pointers in a hurry. There's Kendall Gill. He is back in and moving very well. After that injury, there's Gill taking the shot. No good. Comes right back to Dean Garrett. They'll look for IU now to really try to execute their offense, use a little bit of clock, get high percentage shots. And now shooting at 60%. A lot of that due to Edwards because he has seldom missed. He's been on fire in the second half. Uh-oh, Garrett's loose and he's fouled. See, and Garrett's the one to benefit from Edwards being so hot on the perimeter. That forces Illinois to extend their defense, and that opens up some lanes inside for Dean Garrett. And a battle has drawn his third personal foul. Yeah, excellent bounce, excellent bounce pass in, into Garrett by Hillman that time. But again, the fact that Jay Edwards has been so hot from the perimeter forces Illinois to extend their defense and allow Dean Garrett to maybe get one-on-one -on -one opportunities in the paint area. Lowell Hamilton replaces Glenn Blackwell for Illinois. Garrett 0 for 2 from the line and just barely gets that one. His third point in the second half is 15th of the game. Usually after you just get one, the second one swishes through with no problem at all. <laughs> They're like a true professional and expert, Jim. <laughs> Four-point lead for Indiana. They trail by as much as 11 in the first half. Bardo again, no good. Garrett goes up, no good. And the ball goes off the hands of Cuyaba, and they say an Indiana man, not Cuyaba. So I the think ball it was to Joe Hillman got a hand on that ball. Somebody tried to make a pass along the baseline. Remember, no replays because we've had technical difficulties, and and I just forgot the one we just showed you. So <laughs> we're, we're back in business all the way now. Ball knocked away by Hillman, who draws a foul. That's his first. Hillman trying to hustle, trying to make something happen. 6.39 left. Four-point lead. Indiana, Hamilton at the line, and he is one of the better free throw shooters on a not-so-hot free throw to shooting Illinois team, last of the Big Ten. Well, they were 8 of 11 at halftime. That's not bad, is it? Not bad, but 1 of 4 here in the second half so far. Here's what you said. They need these, and they don't get it. And there's Callaway with Cuyava on him, and the ball will go to Indiana on the possession call. Well, in the game against Ohio State, the game that Illinois lost at Ohio State, they missed a lot of free throws down the stretch, Jim, that may have had that game end up with a different outcome had they made a few. So certainly you need to get all those freebies down, especially in a tight ball game. What a few times I've seen Indiana sleep. Jones had to call, actually call somebody back to take the ball inbounds. They were all just standing around almost at midcourt. That doesn't happen too often with the Hoosiers. There's Edwards, what a firecracker he and Jones are going to be for this year and the next three for Indiana. Explosive probably is a better way to describe that pair. There's Garrett, Kiyabo on him, but Garrett has his second basket of this half and now has 18 points and it is a six-point lead, Indiana. And In the Illinois fans are getting a bit rested. Indiana now the aggressors, momentum on their side, they've got the six-point cushion. Illinois can't afford to become tentative. They've got to go strong to the basket. Block shot by Garrett, who is number one in the Big Ten in blocking shots. <laughs> Averages right around three blocks a game. That time he denied Kuyaba inside. Five and a half minutes to go. 
Indiana, as Clark Kellogg pointed out, they would do using some of the clock. Jones takes it all the way in. Has not scored since midway in the first half, but that's a big bucket there for Illinois as it puts them up by eight. And as time called, with 5.20 to go, 70 to 62. Losing by 11 in the first half. Indiana's up by eight. And the big noise has been Jay Edwards, who was benched through most of the first half. And you can see there how Illinois outscored Indiana in the second half by... 17, I think, 37 oh, yeah. to 20. That's right. It's a huge, huge turnaround, but credit Edwards, credit IU with good ball movement and player movement at the offensive end, and they've denied Illinois the same type of opportunities they had in the first half because they've not turned the ball over as much at yep. all. <laughs> In this half, that's right. Anderson driving on Hillman. Looked like he really wanted the shot, but there was big Dean Garrett there, so he brought the ball back out. Bardo shooting over Jones. Three-point try, no good. Garrett's got the rebound. Kuyava very careful with three personal fouls on himself. Now again, Indiana with his half-court game, looking to run some time off the clock. Edwards Gill is on him with those fast hands. Well, it's really tough to come back on a Bobby Knight coach team in this situation because they execute their half-court offense. Oh, so look well. at this. Got beyond Kiyaba and is fouled by Bardo. And is that number five if it is on Bardo? Let's just check the call of Valentine. No. Bardo heading over to the bench, so apparently that foul That's was it. called on him. That's it. Bardo with 10 points. And Here's Garrett to down in the low post. Bardo comes over, tries to help. Clearly got Derek Garrett across the forearm, and he's going to have to sit down. He played a fine basketball game for well, the fighting in line now today. He is the spark. Remember, we said he had hit five of six from against Ohio State when nobody was hitting anything. And he had eight points in the first half here, but he has picked up his fourth personal foul in the second half and five altogether. And Garrett, who now has 18 points and nine rebounds, is at the line and misses. So Dean is two for five. The low par for him. He comes in shooting 84% in Big Ten play from the strike. And there's Kuyava as he's now two for six. Still an eight-point ball game and enough time for Illinois to do some catching up here. Kuyava's got a good second half and there's a foul call. Kuyava trying to get rid of the ball. By Gary Muncy, and it's on Callaway, his second. Boy, battles such a physical player down low. He's not very tall, but he's got good strength, great jumping ability. That time he just posted up on Ricky Callaway, and Callaway was called for the for the bump foul. And again, Jim, we've talked about it before, but free throws in tight games are very, very crucial. Battle has hit three in a row. This is one and one. <laughs> That's 15 points for Kenny Battle. Well, he's steady. He plays with a lot of intensity. Really tries to play within himself. You don't catch him out there doing things that he doesn't feel comfortable with. Perfect from the free throw line. A little pressure here by Illinois. Hillman. With 4-10 to go. Indiana by six. And the Hoosiers have the basketball. Edwards driving and shooting and no good. And battle goes up. Callaway knocks it away. It is knocked out of bounds on an alert play. Trying to knock the ball back toward the basket they're going to, but still it goes out of bounds. Yeah, I think in that situation, though, Jim, if you can get one hand on it, I think you need to try to get the other paw on it, come down with it, and not give the, the opposing team an opportunity to get the basketball back. There's Gill. Got his hand in, but also his foot, and kicked it out of bounds. All of this is taking 15 seconds off the clock. And Illinois needs the clock. <laughs> they certainly do. Garrett between a couple of people. Feeds out because Edwards is loose and he's fouled by Hamilton. Boy, heads up play that time by Garrett. Double teamed on the baseline. Edwards makes a nice, smart basketball play. Cutting to the basket. Garrett gets it to him and they draw a foul and Edwards will go to the line. Edwards is... Three for four at the line, his last three in a row. 3.53 to go. 22 points for Jay Edwards. He had 22 against Purdue 
one week ago today. Boy, in that game, he had some moves that we love to see any player make in transition, a couple of spin moves. And again, we know he's a great perimeter shooter coming out of high school. And you didn't have to be a rocket scientist to see that, but he's shown the ability to go to the basket a little bit. He's got five three-pointers and two regular field goals, eight-point game again, Indiana. And he's only a freshman, Jim, so Big Ten foes will see him for a while. Anderson, the shot misses, so he'll get two free throws. And it looks like Callaway has drawn his third foul. That's who it is. Now here's Anderson, two for two in the first half, 0 for two in the second half. And they get two shots. Well, I think one thing you, you've got to like about what Illinois is doing right now is that they're getting an opportunity to score with the clock stop. They've drawn fouls the last two times down the floor, so certainly that's in their favor. IU again displaying that what you need in the Big Ten Conference, that toughness on the road and that ability to play well on the road. They've done it here today, especially in this second half. Hamilton takes a seat. Phil Coons comes in as Anderson now has 16 points. And it is a six-point game with 3.40 to go and Gill working on Jones. Edwards driving, puts the shot up, draws the foul on a block. Boy, the young freshman took a questionable shot that time, got bailed out as he was fouled. Boy, Coach Henson doesn't like to see that simply because it was a tough shot. And you bail the, you bail the shooter out with a foul and send him to the line. 21 points in this half for Edwards. 24 altogether. Hamilton is coming back in, and let's see who goes out. Coons just gave him a brief breather there. Edwards hit five in a row before he missed there. Edwards five of six from three-point land. Only two of seven from two-point territory. 73-66, Indiana by seven, 318 left. Anderson taking the shot over Hillman, no good. Big rebound for the rebounder Garrett, almost knocked away by Battle. And then as Garrett gave the ball to Jones, he almost lost it away. Illinois turning on all its speed and quick hands, trying to force a turnover. Indiana just hasn't done that in this half, and that's amazing. It really is, especially when you consider the pressure Illinois plays with defensively. There's a foul by battle number four. Under three minutes left, 2.46 left. Hillman is... We said he's the top free throw shooter, and all of a sudden he went 0 for 1 back in the first half, but he is an 89% shooter before today. Excellent free throw shooter. Well, I think Illinois has plenty of time if they just stay patient within their pressure, Jim, and don't commit the quick foul. Look at that. Hillman is 1 for 3. And they need those. Seven points on the road is not too much with 2.39 to go. Anderson shooting over everybody. No good. Battle underneath. And the foul's going to be on Callaway again, I believe. Now they're pointing at Garrett. Let's let Gary Muncie tell us. <laughs> 20. It is Callaway. Fourth for Rick Callaway. Callaway with four points all in this half and four personal fouls, three in this half. And it'll be Anderson, who is four for six from the line. He hit his last two at the line. Illinois from a solid first half of play where they were able to force the tempo by their defensive pressure and forcing turnovers in the second half not been able to do that and thus Indiana has been able to come back and take the lead and I think it's simply a fact of Illinois being kind of an up and down type team but the game is best suited to them or to their advantage when they can create an up tempo game with turnovers with pressure defense and get some easy basket opportunities that just hasn't happened in the second half because IU's taken much better care of the basketball 18 points for Anderson 17 for battle no call there on a trip Callaway almost got a hand in two on one and the ball is laid in by Anderson 
who now has 20 points, and it's a three-point game with 2.13 to go. This is just the way Illinois likes to play, and they did this much better in the first half. And here's another turnover. Two in a row. Blackwell. They had not had one in the half, and then two in a row makes it a one-point game. One-point ball game, plenty of time. Now Illinois must continue to pressure, but not commit the quick, silly foul. This is the way they like to play, Jim. They want to make the other team turn it over and get those easy layups at the end of the break. 144, Edwards, no! And here comes Blackwell and Illinois, and a foul by Jones. Boy, how quickly things have turned around, Jim. Just a minute ago, IU in the driver's seat, up by seven, a missed free throw, some tough shot selection, a couple of turnovers, and Illinois ready to take the lead if they can knock down a couple of threes. One minute and eight seconds ago, they led by seven points. One minute and eight seconds later, they lead by one, 73-72. Jim Simpson with Clark Kellogg, 1.38 to go, 73-72. Jones, Edwards, Hillman, Callaway, and Garrett on the floor for Indiana. The Yabo we can see is coming back for Illinois. Blackwell, the lone senior, is coming out. Anderson, Battle, and Gill. With 2.46 to go, it was a seven-point ball game. With 1.38 to go, it's the one-point ball game. Well, Blackwell, the lone senior on the squad, is going to be at the free throw line. Jay Edwards, our statistician, just informed us, has scored 22 of IU's 40 points in the second half. Nope. Rebound to Garrett, and that's a big one. Blackwell misses what they needed. Now Indiana, which has not converted in some time down court. They need to execute, be patient. Either get a good shot or draw a foul. A foul on battle. He is out of there. Boy, I tell you what, that was a delayed whistle. About a second and a half, two seconds between the time the foul was apparently committed and the time the official blew the whistle there. He's battle. out of there. 17 points, Clark. And Hamilton will replace him. The 17 points will be missed, but he's also good inside. Very good inside for a player of his size. And also defensively, he's got that ability to come out on the floor and pressure and pressure people. I don't know if they can do that with Lowell Hamilton. Galloway is 0 for 1 from the floor. Indiana needs some points. Illinois hopes they don't get them. 123 to go. Indiana 73 72. No, and Tuyaba with the big rebound as Indiana, the best free throw shooting team in the Big Ten, is having a tough time from the free throw line with exception of Jay Edwards. Illinois, Anderson driving the line, no good. Anderson goes up, good, and Illinois has got the lead. Boy, that's just great hustle, great strength by Nick Anderson. He's only 6'6", but he shows you why he scores and rebounds as well as he does that time. Missed the first shot, got the second one. 22 points by Anderson, 50 seconds to go. Illinois leads by one. Line out. They don't want to foul here. IU maybe wants to get it to their bread and butter guy, Dean Garrett, down in the paint somewhere. Or Jay Edwards, he's been awesome in the second half. Edwards, the ball knocked away by Anderson. It's his first foul, but it puts Edwards, who is the only one that's been shooting the free throws well, he has six of eight at the line on one and one. Boy, I tell you what, Jim. That's not a very smart foul by Nick Anderson. He had good defensive position, good defensive pressure on Edwards. The shot clock running down, and he reaches in and sends Edwards to the line. And he's been 6 of 8, 75% today, but he's an excellent shooter. He's been hot in the second half. Boy, that could hurt. Nick Anderson, only a sophomore, did not play last year a Prop 48 case, so certainly you would wonder about his youth being a factor in that decision. Edwards, it bounces around, but he has his 20th point in the second half, his 23rd of the game, Indiana by two, and of course this becomes a big one to make it by three. Illinois is not blessed with many three-point shooters. They'll take one shot as Indiana leads by one. 
75-74. Edwards has put them ahead. Illinois has got 27 seconds to score and win. I think Nick Anderson is the go-to guy with the personnel on the floor. If Battle was in the lineup, certainly he'd be an option. But Nick Anderson, he's got the ability to shoot the jump shot if he gets it. He can put it on the floor, maybe initiate some contact, draw a foul, and he's knocked down some free throws today. So certainly I would think he would be the primary option. Then you've got Yen Kuyaba, who certainly could be a factor on the backboard for a second shot attempt. Lowell Hamilton, although he's not had a big afternoon, could be a guy to go to because of his ability to shoot it inside. But it's going to come down. Usually the second shot is what beats you, Jim, in these last second situations. Well, again, 75-74, Indiana, Illinois got the basketball. And the fans are standing right up in front of us. Hamilton almost lost the ball away. 15 seconds to go. Kendall Gill has the ball blocked out of bounds by Garrett. They will have 12 seconds on the clock. Gill will inbound the ball. Illinois needs at least a point. Piava's not the man you want to shoot. Gets the ball out off the hands of Hamilton. It belongs to Callaway, and so does the game. They foul him with two seconds to go. Hamilton lost the ball away with two seconds. Boy, it really was a tough pass to handle as Kuyaba was trapped down in the corner. Threw it out of there like a gunshot. Tough pass for Hamilton to handle. Hamilton was going one way. The ball was a little behind him. Turnover, as we look at it on the replay. Tough pass as Hamilton coming to the ball. Kuyaba threw a rifle pass high and behind him a little bit. And Callaway now has a chance to extend the Hoosier lead with free throws. Except he's 0 for 2 from the line and 0 for 3. Two seconds to go and no. 75-74. Indiana wins. Illinois has now lost four in a row. They're 4 and 5.